Hey cuties, everyone's favorite event is back so soon! Wow, Life Wonders must really know how much we love hot pink camo parkas. Before we dive into that though, let's take a gander at the new Valentine's pickup. Oh, Leet, the first love of my youth. With that plump, soft cushion of yours, I won't be gentle. You've committed the heinous crime of having impressive damage at low rates and inaccessible triggers. The damage you do accomplish is quite impressive, I'll give you that. But you find your range of attack often interrupted by your quick to fill charge. Like your base version, your present version does have a respectable single ally charge fill, and your positioning here works quite well as a complement to thrust damage dealers. This should say more than enough though. Thrust range damage is not justifiable with today's board white setups. If I'm in a pinch for boss killing damage though, I'll be sure to give you a pinch, a slap, and a plap. Gabriel. With Shiro's panic variant, Gabriel can be summarized in a single sentence. She does a bit of unreliable damage and some unreliable, low impact healing. She's somehow even worse than Shiro though, given how her heal is not coupled with a damage mitt. The one and only reason you may ever want to pick her up is if you're exploiting Blessing Strengthening, where a few stronger effects from other units and equipments are activated by Blessing. But there are plenty of other units who can provide this while not otherwise being dead weight. Oh, the idle industry has certainly been vicious to this washed up has been. I'm in love with the concept, sweetie, but it's a swing and a miss. Ema's kit operates in two ways, positionally dependent damage or defense amps to allies, and miss dependent personal damage amp. The overall damage you can accomplish is decent, though needing to waste a turn missing just to accomplish decent low range damage is obviously a far cry from peak design. It's a shame since I do like the idea of thrust units having a combination of attack and with mechanics since the range is ideally suited for both hitting and missing. Kima strikes out to the execution though, so maybe you should count on someone else to reach 4th base with. <laughs> we'll let him cook! It's quite impressive how not a single part of his offensive capabilities is guaranteeable, considering his best role is as a damage dealer. Even though his low rate peak damage, it's impressively disappointing, not even breaking 10,000 damage per target. His personal rate up, team damage amp, and debuff mitt are all unguaranteeable. And the only thing you might actually seriously consider using him for is as a sacrifice. I guess this kit can be added to the long list of causes for such a grief. Eat your heart out, such a defense. I'm sure you can get over it from the taste of his cake. Dolby. I'll let the rare strong debuff and extended movement fool you. Toji is not serving any fine dining tonight. I'll have to actually try him out to see how underwhelming his playstyle of disabling skills and charges on the go is. In playing terms, he likes damage and range. Even when his slow to build charge is up, the reward for moving him is too low to justify committing to it. But without that reward, his advantages are only marginally better than his base cards. You're better off just dozing his free common version. Don't worry, Toji. We may yet find some other way you can service us. Wait the beef on this, lad. Although his workout routine is rather dated, his game plan is to solve safely with a massive damage mitigation for the first couple turns of each phase, filling up his team's charge for a final all out assault. While the strategy itself has been made largely obsolete by instant charge meter fills, instant damage, and instant board wipes. For those that don't have a setup like that, Gunzo can make almost any arrangement of randomly assorted units sturdy and bursty. Quite the classic sports story, Gunzo brings his ragtag teammates together and overcomes the odds under his uniting leadership. You don't be using him late game with more specific themes, but he's no bench warmer for those just starting off. I join his team, if only for the after game celebration to get teamed. Lightning round! We've hauled in some ARs and some returning limited units I first covered during its anniversary reprint. Don't blink or you'll miss it! 3, 2, 1, start! Uh, who are you again? Intruder alert! Intruder alert! Have I met you before? Bad touch! I do not consent! 
Fox. Ale ona nie jest zła. Na chwilę? Not now, not ever, no, never. Grace and new build. C-c-c-clear! We've also been graced with a few new evolutions. Let's take a gander at how these units have grown. With the new evolution in tow, Tanatomo does nearly the exact same thing as he did before. It'll be helpful for any specific sort of challenge that explicitly requires a combo, or would benefit from some flat damage added to the mix. Neither of these are particularly common needs for challenges though. Luckily, his evo does make him passively useful for farming in tall maps, now that he can amp his entire team's damage in the classic triple calm clear setup. He's certainly not the best option to fill the role, but he can indeed fill it nonetheless. I could trash on his other more irrelevant parts, but I'd rather not risk teasing this Yandere any further, lest the Kenshi fans shank me. FBI, open up! New evolution, but largely the same use. Jacob continues to have a fantastic synergy with an odd selection of units. You've heard of the Gurungach synergy before, where in combination with him, they can activate the strongest board-wide damage mitigation in the game. He continues this trend of strange synergies with allies who can exploit his new bestowable advantage to freeze stacks. Namely, Kopikar, who can inflict freeze stacks, Alice, who can apply more stackable advantages, and any other unit with a native freeze stack advantage. And this synergy is similarly somewhat situational, offering ramping damage rather than instant damage, but it has its uses here and there. As was before, he also has a bit of other personal defense and some decent personal damage. He can stand on his own, but naturally, benefits greatly from having the right person to hold his hand. The only gentle. Respect your elders. The gentleman before you is one of the forebears of Boardwide Amp. He has fallen a bit after last year's democratization of that, but still holds his ground with his combined local amp, non-moving tanking, and maintenance of movement advantage. There is a caveat to his impressive local amp. Their timings make them impossible to exploit all at the same time on turn 1. The other impressive utilities makes bring him still justifiable though, and you may find Yoritomo to be quite the powerhouse as a plug-in-and-play advantage confer, giving you the high ground in damage, defense, and movement. Take his discipline like a champ, and you'll be soaked in his gracious rewards. By the way, that version of Yoritomo isn't actually available at Raid Up right now. Cool beans! Anyway, should he pull on these banners? That's a loud no for the pickup, and a softer no for the returning snowball fight banner. It would be great to fetch Yoritomo and Jacob, although they're by no means centralizing enough to start breaking out the wallet for. That's all for now, babes. See you on the flip side!